Chapter 292, Li Yi. When standing in front of this monolith and seeing the name Lion Monarch Bazian, Kaiziri couldn't help but become emotional and proud. This was her grandfather's ancestor. Not only did he study at the academy, but he also swept through the eight desolaces. Even though he was born during immortal Emperor Tanra's era, he was still an amazing figure for an entire generation. This was the Lion Monarch's personal autograph, a memento of their family. Staring at this magnificent keysake, Kaiziri's heart surged with pride. She couldn't help but to clench her fists tightly. Her ancestor was the Hundred Battles God King, someone who was accepted by the true gods. Her other ancestor was the Lion Monarch, a paragon of a generation. As their descendant, maybe one day, she will be able to reignite her ancestor's glory and divine aura again. Li Kai stared at the monolith without saying anything. One familiar name, one famous person, one invincible character, one smiling proud genius. Alas, in the end, it didn't matter whether one was invincible or an immortal emperor, everything would disappear along the river of time. Any of the names on this monolith represented a peak at one point or another, symbolizing a golden era. He knew some of them and had heard of others, and there were even those who fought alongside his chariot and contributed greatly. Alas, all of them disappeared because walking on a grand Dao path was a lonely road. It was a cruel and pitiless fate. Let us go. Li Kai gently sighed and spoke to Kai Zianti, who was in a daze in front of the monolith. Kai Zianti managed to calm her surging emotions and followed Li Kai. When the two of them stepped inside the academy, a young man stepped down from the stairs to greet them. This must be Brother Li, right? He clasped his hands towards Li Kai and Kai Zianti. Then he smilingly asked. This young man had a tall and stout body like an unshakable mountain. He didn't exude a pressing aura, but his eyes were like black stones, sparkling, firm, and heroic. My name is Li Yi. My apologies for the late reception despite your long trip. The young man was courteous and judicious and he also had an extraordinary bearing. Li Kai didn't say anything, but Kai Ziyadi was startled after learning that it was Li Yi. She didn't expect the academy's first disciple to personally greet them. Li Yi was a renowned person in the Eastern Hundred Cities even though his fame was not like Zhu Huangwu of the brilliant ancient kingdom. Someone whose background and talents were absolutely brilliant along with an unstoppable rising cultivation. Li Yi was also not like First Prince Bazai of the furious immortal saint country. Someone who had a suppressive and frightening aura who challenged everyone and became famous from his battles. Li Yi joined the Heavenly Dao Academy and became its first disciple. While withstanding arduous training, his cultivation was kept very low profile. He rarely challenged outsiders to battle, but Li Yi sat strong on his throne at the academy and never feared any challenges. He remained an unshakable mountain no matter which genius tested his might. Even when Ba Zai, with his strong natural fighting aptitude, challenged him, Li Yi still calmly agreed. No one knew the result of this fight, but Ba Zai went into secluded meditation after he went back to his country. The same country then announced that the battle between Ba Zai and Li Yi was a draw. Some people speculated that Ba Zai was not able to defeat Li Yi and that the friendly Li Yi stopped at the appropriate time. Curious people ranked the younger generation inside Eastern Hundred Cities. One leaderboard placed Mai Su Ayao at first place and Li Yi and Zhu Huangwu at second place. This ranking was not without reasons, but of course, there were those who rejected it and thought that Li Yi's strength was not comparable to Zhu Huangwu. In short, Li Yi was one of the strongest geniuses in the Eastern Hundred Cities, but he had always kept a low profile in the academy and simply trained. Thus his fame was not as thunderous as the fame of Zhu Huangwu or Ba Zai. Li Kai smiled and leisurely said, Excuse us, us two are going to the Grand Air Hall to sign up. Li Kai was very carefree as if he was a tourist looking at the scenery. Kai Ziti quietly stood next to Li Kai and simply followed his lead. Then I will lead the way for Brother Li and Miss Kai. Li Yi did not delay with small talk. He summoned a sailboat then boarded it before speaking. There is still a long way to the Grand Air Hall. Allow me to take you to there. The two stepped onto the boat. Then Li Yi controlled it to fly up to the sky. The speed of the sailboat was extremely astonishing and it traveled 10,000 miles in the blink of an eye. Wang Yuan's transportation vehicle is indeed interesting. This boat had once sunk into the ocean but it still managed to come out eventually. Li Kai stood on the sailboat and became a bit moved after seeing this familiar old object. Kai Ziyadi was startled. She didn't expect this tiny sailboat to be the second sage's treasure. How great was the second sage's status in the history of the academy? This was indicative of Li Yi's position in the academy. Brother Li is very knowledgeable. I am ashamed at my inferiority. Li Yi was also surprised. Li Yi had always used this sailboat, but very few people recognized its origin at a first glance. Li Kai recognizing this treasure caught him off guard, but he now vaguely understood why the academy's upper echelon suddenly recruited a student with an unknown background like this. The sailboat rode the air straight into the Heavenly Dao Academy. Once inside, one would finally understand how wide this piece of heaven and earth was. At this place, the large rivers flowed for 100,000 miles. At this place, the mountains spanned a million of miles like giant dragons. At this place, there were cities with millions of inhabitants. At this place, the divine bridges shortened the gaps between the eight directions, connecting the divine mountains that pierced all the way up to the heavens. Kaiziyadi was astonished that she was visiting this heaven and earth for the first time. It was a complete mistake to think that the Heavenly Dao Academy was just a simple academy like its name indicated. It was more like a giant country, a behemoth-like existence. Its territory was extremely vast. Only the Eternal River School was comparable to the monstrous academy in the Eastern Hundred Cities. Eventually, they arrived at the Grand Air Hall. It was more apartment to call it a grand sect rather than a grand hall. The entire hall had dozens of valleys and mountains, creating a region that stretched for thousands of miles. Ancestral grounds of ordinary heritages would not necessarily have the same rich density of worldly energy as this place. One could only imagine how frightening the academy's heaven and earth vein was. 
There was a rumor that said that the Academy possessed the best vein in the entire Eastern Hundred Cities, maybe even the entire mortal emperor world, because of this. For millions of years, countless great characters coveted the Academy's sacred territory, but unfortunately, none of them were able to shake its foundation. Li Kai and Kai Zidi went to the top of a mountain. Lo Yi got the order from the upper echelons to give the two of them a mountain. This treatment was very generous inside the Grand Air Hall. After arranging everything for the two of them, Li Yi said, There are tens of thousands of disciples at the Grand Air Hall. If Brother Li and Miss Kai want to meet others, then I can introduce them to you too. Kai Zidi would completely listen to Li Kai's command so she didn't make any comments. Meanwhile, Li Kai shook his head and smilingly replied, No need, I will rest for now. Lo Yi then explained the situation at the hall to Li Kai, Very well, there will be a lecture once every four hours by a senior of the academy. The two of you can pick any course that you like. Finally, he finished with a polite remark, If Brother Li and Miss Kai have anything in mind, feel free to come find me at any time. In fact, Lo Yi was quite perplexed and didn't know why the higher-ups told him to greet two students. These two students didn't go through any examinations, nor did they pay any tuition fees. There were countless geniuses in the contemporary time, but the academy did not allow for anyone to go through the back door. Even geniuses like Ba Zai and Zhu Huang Wu had to pay a sky-high tuition fee or pass a series of assessments to join the academy. Even the extremely expensive tuition had a basic test. If one couldn't meet this basic requirement, then they wouldn't be able to join no matter how rich they were. Only geniuses were allowed into the academy. However, the absolutely brilliant ones would have their tuition waived if they managed to pass all the examinations. These peak prodigies were happy to undergo these examinations because it was a sort of glory. Even though the Grand Air Hall had the lowest requirements, it had always enforced its strict standards. Any students that joined this hall had to either pay the tuition or pass the test. If they passed the test with flying colors, then their tuition would be reduced. Lo Yi found it strange that Li Kai and Kai Zidi didn't take any examinations nor pay any tuition. Kai Zidi was one thing, being the princess of the Lion's Roar country, there were too many characters like her. The problem was the mysterious origin of Li Kai. What really perplexed Li Yi was that if Li Kai had a heaven-frightening origin, he would not join the Grand Air Hall but rather the Sacred Air Hall. Not to mention that even if Li Kai was an extraordinary genius, the Academy would not open the back door just for him. Zhu Huang Wu and Di Ji Kong Wudi were both powerful and invincible enough. Ah, however, even they had to pass examinations in order to enter the stronger halls. 